Okay. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Can we read together that? One, two, three, we go. I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. I'm going to be speaking shortly from the theme fighting a good fight. Fighting a good fight. Oh God, we are here because we need you. We need you to teach us. We need you to guide us. We need you to encourage us. That's why we yield to the action of the Holy Spirit. That you may minister to the, our innermost being. That we may draw strength to be victors in our everyday life. We know that devil is defeated and we cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. We pray for the utterance that comes from God in the name of Jesus. That every hearer may be anointed, blessed, and lifted. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people say, Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I first want to tell you that we are in a fight. Tell your neighbor we are in a fight. Whether you want it or not, whether you agree with it or not, whether you desire it or not, we are in a fight. We are in a fight. And this fight, we are supposed to participate in it. If you don't fight, they will fight you. You either attack or you are attacked. You are either on the offensive or on the defensive. But either way, there is a fight. That's why Paul calls you a soldier. The Bible says that endure hardship as a good soldier. So the Bible cannot call you a soldier on a party. They cannot call you a soldier when there is nothing you are defending. They cannot call you a, a soldier when there is nothing you are keeping. So every time they call you a soldier, they are in other words telling you that there is a fight. It is a humble way to tell you that you are a warrior, you are a fighter. Somebody say, I'm a fighter. Praise the Lord. So as you walk, you have to have that consciousness. You have to have that awareness that there is a war, there is a battle, there is a conflict going on, and you are involved in it. You are not a spectator, but you are a participator in this fight. And when, you are, when they tell you that you are a soldier, that means there is something you are fighting against. And there is something you are fighting for. There is a cause for you to enroll in this army. Amen? There is something that you are fighting against. The Bible says that finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And then he says, we do not war against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. That's what you're fighting against. You're fighting against demons, you're fighting against sicknesses, you're fighting against depression, you're, against, uh, you're fighting against uh, things that are attacking your health, attacking your business, attacking your children, attacking your family, attacking things around you, attacking uh, your inheritance. So you have to stand 
and repel them. You have to stand and fight them. You have to stand and fight and disperse them. That's why the Bible says that the enemy will come against you in one way, but he shall be scattered in seven ways. That is the promise of God. Why? Because you are in the battle. But you have a promise that when they come to attack you, the Bible says they shall gather against you. But not because of me, but whoever gathers, whoever comes to fight you, whoever comes to, to engage you in a battle, the Bible says they shall fall for your sake. So you have a promise in the midst of the fight, in the midst of the battle, that there is victory for you. Amen? So you, you're not only, uh, secondly, you're not only fighting against, you're fighting for something. There is a cause. There, is, uh, there, is, uh, there, there are things that you're, there are values that you're fighting for. There are principles that you're fighting for. There are things that you're fighting for. Amen? The core thing that I'm, I'm trying to emphasize is that there is a fight. And that fight, you are involved in it. Amen? All of you have something you want to protect. You want to protect your vision. You want to protect your plans. You want to protect your dreams. You want to protect your families. You want to protect your, 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 your parents. You want to protect your children. You want to protect your wife. You want to protect your husband. You want to protect your relationship. You want to protect your work. You want to protect your job. You want to protect your ministry. So you are fighting for the things. You are fighting for your ministry. Because if you don't fight, there is an enemy that is fighting to put you down. There is an enemy that is fighting to depress you. There is an enemy that is fighting to make you run mad, to lose your mind, to give up, to surrender. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, God, uh, Jesus spoke to, to Peter and said, The enemy has wanted to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. Amen? So there is an enemy that is trying to attack you, to pull you down from what you believe in, from what, from what uh, you have been promised, from what belongs to you. You know that you have a family. You know that you have children. You know that you have a wife. Maybe you have a husband. Maybe you have a relationship. The devil wants to destroy it. The devil wants, the Bible says, a thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Whether he comes in a suit, whether he comes in a gomas, whether he comes with a suite, whether he comes in a rugs, whether he comes with the horns, whether he comes when he's smart, whichever way he comes, his mission is the same. He wants to take joy away from you. He wants to take peace away from you. He wants to t take away the joy of your salvation. He wants you to be miserable. He wants you to be depressed all the time. And every time you sit down and you're crying and you're wailing and you're throwing up your hands and you're throwing in the towels and you're surrendering and you're giving in, the, that is the joy. He sits on the other side and begins to gloat over you. He begins to celebrate. He begins to see that he has overcome. But the devil is a liar. The Bible says, I have come that they may have life and life in abundance. Amen. Tell your neighbor, fight. So we, we, we have to fight. We have, we engaged in a war, we engaged in a battle. But now there is something that the Bible is saying. That I have fought the good fight. In other words, there are good fights and there are also bad fights. There are times when we have been uh, engaged in, in, in court issues. But sometimes you approach a lawyer and he, he looks through the file, looks through the papers, looks through everything and says, this is a good case. Amen? But there are also times when you bring your case, he looks through, he looks at the, the documentation, he looks at the evidence, he looks at all the things, and he says, this is a bad bad case because you're going to speak and speak and speak at the end of the day you'll have no evidence you will speak and speak and speak but there is no precedence there is no case 
related to there is nothing you can quote about a judgment that was made before this one so that becomes a bad case so even in the in the battle there is what we call a good fight and a bad fight and the bible says that who of you when he's going to war does not sit down and plan if the enemy is strong then you negotiate amen now that means that there are bad fights and there are good fights it could the fight could be bad maybe because of the method you're using amen uh, maybe because of poor planning maybe because of the equipment that you're using the strategies that you're using to fight your battle but the Bible is talking about a good fight I'm not going to dwell so much on the bad fight I want to put my emphasis on the good fight somebody say good fight so Paul here gives us an example and tells us I have fought a good fight there have been fights that are going on and I've been involved in them but when I look back I see I have fought a good fight the question is the battles that you are involved in the conflicts you are involved in the fights you are involved in are they good fights what makes a fight a good fight praise the Lord now let's let's uh, read again first Timothy chapter 6 verse 12 it says now the first scripture we have read Paul is giving a testimony of what has happened in, in his life and he said I have fought the good fight but here he's writing to the believers he's writing to his son Timothy and he's telling him you are doing ministry you are you are organizing and rea rearranging things you are dating pastors and leaders and training others then chapter 6 and verse 12 he says fight the good fight of faith Someone say a good fight of faith so a, for a fight according to the biblical setting the good fight the fight that will bring you results in relation to God and divine things is a fight of faith amen the Bible says though we walk in the flesh we do not war according to the flesh because our weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So that means you can choose to fight in the flesh. Because after all, you are in the flesh. The Bible says, even though we are in the flesh, even though you have a body, even though you have the senses, even though you have you have experiences when it comes to fighting battles the Bible says we do not fight in line in accordance following the flesh following the systems but the Bible says the weapons that we use they are mighty somebody say mighty somebody say mighty they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds now the, might, the the weapons they are talking about they are spiritual weapons that means that the battles before they manifest in the flesh their origin is in the spirit and the weapons that we use are supposed to originate in the spirit though we are fighting b uh, battles that are manifesting in the flesh our war point is the spirit 
And in the spirit, in order to fight this battle, the Bible says, we fight the fight of faith. Now let me explain this. We all agree that we are saved by faith. Amen? Are we saved by faith? We are saved by faith. The Bible says, and by grace are we saved through faith. And it's the gift of God. And the Bible also says that we who are of faith are blessed with Abraham. So in other words, even being blessed, we are blessed by faith. If it comes to healing, we are healed by? If it is uh, operating in the spiritual things, speaking tongues, you speak in tongues by faith. You cast out demons by faith. You operate in the gifts of healing by faith. You, you, you please God by faith. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And the Bible says, all things are possible with God. And then he also says, all things are possible to them that believe. Are you following me? So in other words, if we are going to, to get the promises of God, it will have to be by faith. If we, if we are going to achieve anything, if we are going to keep our families, it's going to be by faith. If we are going to protect our husbands or our wives, it's going to be by? If you're going to raise your children, it's going to be by? Somebody say faith. If you're going to fight against uh, demons, uh, uh, whatever you call them, ancestral spirits, the, the demonic spirits, witchcraft, sorcery, you fight these battles by faith. So if you are going to be a believer who is successful, the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. So if you are going to be a successful believer, an achieving believer, an overcoming believer, a believer who breaks through, you are going to be a believer who fights your fights, your woes, your battles by faith. So the biggest problem is to fight to keep your faith. Because that is what brings the results. That is what connects you with God. That's what uh, connects you with the heavenlies. That's what brings you in, in harmony with God. That's what opens the heavens for you. So what the devil does is to attack your faith. He, may, he brings you to a point where you're going to doubt God, doubt the promises of God, doubt what... And this battle has not started today. It has started so many years. It started in the Garden of Eden. When God spoke to Adam and said, Eat of everything that I've given you, except this tree, because the day you will eat of it, then you will die. So the serpent comes to the woman and say did god say you shall not eat of any tree of the garden then the woman says no god said you should eat of every tree except the tree which in the midst of the garden you shall not eat of it neither shall you touch it then he said and, and he says if you do so you will die then the devil jumps in he says no you shall not die in other words what God said, he didn't mean what he said. Amen? You can, you can, you can do away, you can still survive, you can still, you can still live apart from God, apart from the word of God, apart from what God has told you to do. Praise the Lord. And, and so, he convinces the woman, and the woman begins to see what was prohibited to be accepted. The Bible says when he looked at the tree again, when she looked at the tree again, the tree was good for food. Previously, it wasn't good for food. She knew 
she was convinced so she did not even have time to look at the tree but when they convinced her when they told her think again god did not mean that you're going to die actually god is preventing you from reaching somewhere god is hiding something from you when you eat of this tree you're going to be like god so the woman looked at the tree the tree was good for food the tree was desirable to make one wise so she took of the tree and ate of it praise the lord so that is where the fight began from there it was about whether this woman will believe what god has said or believe what the devil has said so every day there are voices that are speaking to us when god said i have blessed you then when you go back home and then you find there is no food you find they are demanding uh, rent you find the children are sick and the voice tells you you are anti bewitched you and that witchcraft is working and so you you are caught between the two will you believe the word of god that says you are blessed or you will believe the word that says surely your auntie cast you and the cast is the one following you that's why whatever money you get is going through your hands so it is now the fight to keep what god has said about you and when you read the book of hebrews chapter 11 it is a book it is a, is a chapter about fights it is a chapter about faith and at the end of the day we look at it as a chapter of faith they call it a chapter of faith they say by faith abel offered a better sacrifice that means as he was coming he was seeing an example because cain was the first one to to give the offering so he was saying no but but why should you give this the other one had just given him whatever he wanted so you can also pick from anything and then he's like this is god this is God who has blessed me. And God said we should appear before him with sacrifices of thanksgiving. So there the are voices speaking within him. He's having a conflict. He's having a battle within himself. Should he go with the experience he has seen with his brother? Or should he go with what pleases God? And the Bible says without faith it is impossible to please God. So you are caught between pleasing God and pleasing yourself and pleasing others so that is the fight you have to fight to keep your faith 